It's basically anything published in Australia, uh, anything published by an Australian, or uh, anything that's significantly, significantly about Australia or Australians. Our focus is the dark PT domain. That is what we crawl most uh, in the most comprehensive way. But then we also get uh, user suggestions um, for content related or interesting to the, to the Portuguese community. So anyone can suggest a, a website to be archived. And we also have special care, or at least we try to get some research and education content uh, from an international scope, because science actually has no boundaries. So we try to get the best that we can uh, of, of uh, research and education content, such as websites from, for instance, European uh, research projects. We are glad to get them and preserve them in our web archive. French web archiving is um, shared between the French National Library and INA, and the part uh, for which INA is responsible is all the websites related to media, so to uh, French uh, television and uh, radio. And at the beginning, it was only websites, but uh, then we added uh, new objects like the radio streams and uh, today YouTube, Twitter, and maybe uh, Facebook very soon. Pretty broad. Um, there's various departments uh, and curators capturing content. Um, a lot of it is kind of government and politics based. We have local California government um, as well as U.S. government sites and also international subject matter. Um, there's a tendency to try to capture things that are more ephemeral and likely to disappear. So there's a lot of kind of election, uh, kind of time-based events like that. Um, but there's also a lot of cultural and social aspects that curators are trying to get. And um, definitely our university websites are being crawled regularly. Um, and then we also kind of get one-off requests from various partners throughout the campus. They may just want a snapshot taken of a particular project that they've worked on that's web-based. We, uh, we, we still have kind of that, that strong emphasis on the federal information. Um, that's been something that we've felt has been the cornerstone of our collections and is still of um, a strength we have and something we're looking for. Um, we have been collecting the unt.edu domain, so that's our university's web publishing domain um, since 2004. And we capture that twice a year, and that's part of just our mission as the university archives as well. And um, in addition to that, we're starting to see um, collections from our special collections uh, being interested in kind of supplementing physical collections that they're acquiring and moving that into the digital realm. So um, LGBT collections, Dallas local collections, um, things that are uh, important to the North Texas and Texas region. In a more general fashion, it's um, uh, all the domains in, in the contain in the .lu uh, top level domain. Um, and in a more uh, broad way, we could say every website that is about Luxembourg, by Luxembourgish people or about Luxembourgish people. So that is kind of our interpretation of the legal deposit that we have. But we see the um, legal, instead of um, seeing the legal deposit as an obligation, we see it as a possibility. So we have the pos different possibilities of what we want to include in our scope, and we try to be as inclusive as possible. It's about uh, it's about a little over 10 billion URLs now, um, and that includes uh, duplicate snapshots, um, and it's uh, it's about 400 terabytes, um, growing by some 50 or so terabytes a year. We have uh, six billion files. I don't know how much ter terabytes, but the 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 main demand is not on storage, it's on memory to provide access. So free, uh, so uh, speed, uh, fast access. 
and, and also to make redundancies so that the information can be kept um, safe. So we have, at this moment, we have 2.6 petabytes of uh, storage capacity and around four, 14 terabytes of memory. But the, pre the pressure is on memory, not on disk. Because you're gonna have to have copies and then you have to, to generate the indexes and the, the, indexes, the indexes must be kept at least partially on memory because otherwise the, the, the response times will go down. So the pressure is on memory. So when, sometimes when people talk about how many terabytes do you have, it doesn't matter. Disk is, is cheap. Memory is expensive. We have um, 85 uh, billions of versions of URLs. Uh, and altogether, the websites we archive represent uh, 14,000 uh, websites. Uh, and we also have uh, 1 billion tweets coming from uh, 13,000 uh, accounts, all specialized about uh, media. And we also have uh, today 22 million videos, which represent 2.3 uh, million hours. And all together, it, made, uh, it makes uh, 6.5 petabytes. And so the thing is, right now we have about 550 seeds cataloged. But there are many more um, stored in the repository that just haven't been assigned descriptive metadata yet. And then there's even more that's being selected and crawled and archive it and hasn't been migrated into the repository yet. And I really don't have a sense of that scale of content. I imagine we have some archive it limit storage limit, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot. It's now around 500 terabytes. We're actually not that good at counting what we have. <laughs> um, depending on who you ask, we have very different sizes. Uh, so um, I, I think we're actually um, right around 200 and 250 terabytes of, of web content. Um, uh, about half of that is in our repository. Um, proper, and the rest of that is kind of, we have it, it's sitting around, but it hasn't been fully ingested into our, our systems. Um, the bulk of that is gonna be the end of term work that we've done, um, and then our um, UNT crawls are, are fairly large every semester that we do those. In terms of terabytes, we're at around 50 terabytes of compressed work files, and in terms of millions of URLs, I honestly uh, don't know. I think it's about 350 million or something like this. Yes, they can, uh, but in, in, uh, currently in, in, in a formal way, we have a, a, um, a form where, uh, where members of the public can nominate websites, uh, and then uh, that basically sends an email to our curatorial team who will then decide whether it actually meets the selection criteria or, or not. Um, and, uh, one of the, the, the things there is that that process was designed when we had to ask permission. So we had to, we had to be quite limited in, in terms of the material we were collecting just due to the amount of effort it took and both to go out and contact people, but also to, to sort of um, set up the metadata and, and run the process. So we don't currently have a, a, a process like you see at the Inter Archive where just a member of the public can just say, capture this page right now and it just fully automatically does it. We don't currently have anything like that. Now that we've got digital legal deposit, that's potentially something we could we could uh, explore in the future is uh, not just sort of random members of the public, but also people who have published websites to be able to self, I, I, guess, I, I guess you could use the word self deposit that kind of material. If they wanted to, they could uh, tell us what they want us to collect because we have a Twitter account and we make kind of communication, but we, we don't address the great grand public. Um, so it means that we can add new hashtags or new objects to our collection, uh, but most of the time they come from um, researchers' community and not from the public itself. Yes, they can. They usually uh, nominate some uh, uh, websites uh, using a, ma a special ma uh, mailbox um, and also uh, via Twitter. They usually uh, contact us uh, on these both ways. They can, um, and we, so one of the tools that we actually built um, uh, in collaboration with uh, the end of term project is uh, what we call the URL nomination tool. And it's a way 
of setting up kind of a, a project. And we've had a number of these, the end of terms. Um, we've had some local events that have occurred where we're really interested in getting um, nomination of URLs, nomination of seeds from the community, and then we will go crawl those on behalf of that, that community. And um, this tool has been really helpful. Um, there are other initiatives like Cobweb in the US that's trying to provide additional services on top of just basic no uh, nomination. But I think that that's, a, that's an important piece of running a web archive is to make sure that it's unlikely that we will ever know the full scope um, of what we're trying to capture. And so having a mechanism where um, our users can provide access or provide suggestion on what we're missing is, is really helpful. Very soon, the, uh, we'll be able to do so. Um, we are working at uh, webarchive.lu, which will be our uh, uh, website um, created to promote the web archive. Uh, to show um, uh, what what collections we are working on, uh, and uh, where a big big part of the website will be to encourage participation. So there will be a, a, a simple form where you can say, "Please um, archive this website." Um, we might also ask for uh, certain permissions with that if if the website owner uh, uh, wants to go to go um, uh, further with this. And uh, it, it, uh, yeah, the big question will be: um, none of the collections we have are complete or perfect. There is always something missing, and if you feel that uh, you are missing something, you can always tell us, and uh, we are happy to 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 keep. A little bit, we've we we would like to, but we've struggled with that from a, a tooling perspective. Um, we do capture uh, particularly. Um, Sort of important social events like um, uh, elections and uh, and things like that. So we will attempt to capture some of the uh, politicians' political feeds um, and uh, other kind of activists groups websites and, and and some social media. But it's yeah, tooling has been an, an issue for that, and it's something we kind of are working on and, and want to get better at. Um, Can I just ask what um, what social media channels you try to. Primarily Twitter, um, but also some YouTube and some Instagram and uh, Facebook we haven't really been able to do. We have begun with Twitter uh, in uh, 2013 and we have a full text uh, index on Twitter since uh, 2016. And we hope that uh, at the end of this year we'll be able to archive Facebook as well and Instagram a bit later. We capture uh, Twitter accounts. We have some problems with uh, Facebook. Uh, we also capture videos, but the problem afterwards is uh, how, how you retrieve these kind of documents, but yes. So we definitely do capture social media, um, and a lot of it's, we, we do it in two ways. So, so one is kind of just passively as it, it, it organically comes from doing web crawls, and we do seed our, our crawlers with, um, with uh, the, um, various social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram. Um, um, we also do uh, take special care to um, harvest video content from YouTube and from Vimeo. Um, we also have some other activities that we do, which is adjacent to the web archiving piece where we've um, proactively gathered some Twitter data sets um, using the Twitter API and making um, things that are of local or, or, or national importance to us. So we have like the Hurricane Harvey um, data set. We have uh, um, uh, probably about a dozen Twitter data sets that we make the identifiers available for, for that download. And then we started to get a lot of contact from researchers interested in act, um, actively using the larger data sets. Yes, in some cases we had um, a series of uh, targeted crawls um, f uh, over different uh, election campaigns, and we selectively um, included some uh, social media pages, also um, YouTube channels of the political parties, of candidates, of uh, uh, political commentary, uh, also uh, news media. Uh, yes, but it's not on a regular basis, it was over a, a short period of time. Twitter, Facebook. Um, I believe we also tried Instagram uh, for a bit, uh, although it that was didn't play a big role in that context. 